All right, and good evening, everybody. Today we're going to be doing practice and problem solving for multiplying and inequalities, multiplying and dividing inequalities. <clears throat> well, let's go over what we did in class real quick. Let's remember, whenever we multiply or divide by a positive number, our inequality symbol stays the same. So in this case over here, uh, we have a positive 8. So um, we're multiplying 8 times m. And remember, when solving inequalities, just like equations, we do PEMDAS backwards. And we do everything backwards. So uh, instead of multiplying, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to divide 8 from 8m. That separates 8 from 8m and leaving m 8 by itself. For some reason, instead of putting uh, m over here, they put x. And I'm going to rectify that because we should stick to the same variable, shouldn't we? <clears throat> Next, uh, if I divide from one side, I'm going to divide the same number from the other side. And 56 divided by 8 is 7, positive 7. And this is what I meant now. Since our uh, coefficient okay, is 8, we divided by 8. And since 8 was a positive number, the inequality symbol did not change. We did not flip it. So uh, now I know that m is less than or equal to 7, which means right here I'm going to put a dot and fill it in since it can be equal to. And then I'm going to put 7 underneath. And since it's less than 7, I'm going to go ahead and put my line to all the numbers that are going less than 7. All right? <clears throat> now, for number 8, we have the other example. Uh, we see that we have negative 7 times x is greater than 56. Well, uh, we are uh, dividing or multiplying, in this case, dividing, uh, by a negative number this time. Notice that negative sign there. And so uh, the book has a little mistake here. They should have had a negative 7x there. And that would require us to divide negative 7 from this side. Whatever I do to one side, of course, I do to the other side. And now, since I'm dividing by a negative number, uh, I'm going to flip my inequality symbol to the other direction. And uh, this time we stayed with the same variable. That's nice. And so now 56 divided by negative 7 will be negative 8. And so right over here, um, we're going to put, well, we would not put a dot. We would put a circle because uh, this does not have an equal sign to it. And we're going to put negative 8 underneath it. And uh, while well, we're going to point our line to all the numbers that are less than negative 8. All right? And that's what we meant by uh, not flipping it if it's uh, multiplying and dividing by a positive number, and in flipping it if it's multiplying and dividing by a negative number. So I'm going to let you do number 7 and 8 by yourselves. <clears throat> and here's a little hint. Remember, if uh, you have a fraction, you're dividing, so you're going to have to do the opposite of division, and you'll want to multiply the inverse, the inverse of what is there, okay? So let's go ahead and do number 10 now. Kyra and her friends shared a bag of fruit snacks. Each person got no more than three fruit snacks, uh, no more than being the key word here. The inequality, uh, x divided by 6 is less than or equal to 3, represents the situation. Solve the inequality to find the possible numbers of fruit snacks that were in the bag. Well, uh, if I solve this inequality, x is, uh, let's see, x divided by uh, 6 is less than or equal to 3. Well, that means I can go ahead and, since I'm dividing 6, I'm going to multiply 6 to both sides. So now I have x um, divided by 6 times 6. And since we're multiplying and dividing by the same number, that's going to cancel those out. Uh, is going to be less than or equal to uh, 3. And whatever I multiply to one side, I have to multiply to the other side. And since the number that we're multiplying is not negative, I don't change my inequality symbol. It will stay the same. <clears throat> well, these canceled each other out. So x is by itself now. And 3 times 
Uh, six is 18. So our answer is 18. Our X is, I'm sorry, is less than or equal to 18. Uh, and it doesn't say to graph it, so I'm not going to. Uh, but we're ready to go to number 12 now. It says, Brittany can spend no more than $15 for her new fish in her aquarium. Okay? For new fish in her aquarium. Uh, let F be the number of fish she can buy. What inequality represents this problem? Well, let's see. Inequality would be, <clears throat> said F is going to be the number of fish she can buy. And each one of those fish costs $3. Now, we don't know how much the fish are, but we do know that we're going to multiply it by three in order to find out how much we're going to spend. And that amount can be no more than, in other words, can be less than or equal to $15. And that is our inequality. Now, <clears throat> another way you could write this, I guess, would be uh, the fish is, uh, let's see, less than or equal to, uh, let's see, uh, I would say 15 uh, times three. Oh, I'm sorry, 15 divided by three. I'm sorry, my apologies. I'm, I would have had to divide three away from three up, so I would have had to divide on this side as well. And now the next part says, how many fish can Brittany buy? Well, if I solve this, uh, well, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that's going to leave me with, let's see. And I didn't have to flip anything because I didn't divide by a negative number. It says, how many fish can Brittany buy? Well, she can buy uh, no more than, right, 5 fish. So... Uh, five fish or less. So I would type in uh, she can buy no more than five fish. All right. And let's go to number 14 now. Solve the inequality. Negative 3x is less than 12. This is one of those that have the negative coefficient. So if I do negative 3x less than 12, I have to remember that I'm going to be dividing a negative number into that, okay, uh, to get rid of that negative 3. If not, I'm going to have negative x, and I don't want to know what negative x is. I want to know what x is. But whatever I divide from one side, I have to divide from the other. And now that I've canceled this out, x is going to be... And since I divided by a negative 3, my inequality symbol has to be turned around. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So that means the answer to this question is x is greater than 4. Reasoning. Uh, describe how you know the direction of the inequality sign without solving the inequality. Well, uh, that one's pretty easy. <clears throat> Whenever... I multiply or divide by a negative coefficient, I have to turn my n e quality symbol in the other direction. All right. Uh, let's go to number 16. Solve the inequality, then graph the solution on a number line. All right. <clears throat> if I solve this inequality, uh, well, the first thing I have to realize is I'm going to be uh, dealing with a decimal and a fraction. So I'm going to have to change one or the other. So maybe I'll do them both ways for you here. This right here can be turned into 6 and uh, let's see, 25ths would be 1 fourth. So I could pay negative 6 and 1 fourth x. 
uh, is less than negative 38 and 3 fourths. Now, since I'm multiplying here, I have to divide away. So I'm going to have to divide by the inverse, but I can't find the inverse without going ahead and finding out what the improper fraction this makes. So this is 24 times 6. As, uh, I'm sorry, 4 times 6 is 24 plus 1. That's going to be negative 25 over 4. It's going to be less than... Uh, well, this once again has to get turned into a, uh, let's see, 4 times 38. Wow. Uh, 38 times, sorry, times 4. And that's going to be uh, 32. That's uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 152 plus three, so that's gonna be 155. 155 uh, over four. Now in order to do this, uh, I have to remember, well, there's an X over here. I have to remember I'm gonna to have to multiply this by the inverse. The inverse of negative 25 over four is negative four over 25. And I'll multiply this to this side, which will cancel all this out and leave x by itself. Uh, and I've uh, multiplied by a negative number. So that means my symbol has to be turned around. And now whatever I've multiplied to one side, I have to multiply to the other. Well, see, I've got 4 over 4, right? So I can cancel them out. This would be a negative 1, and this would be 1. And both, I know that both of these are divisible by 5, so 25 divided by 5 will give me 5. But 155 divided by 5, that's a tricky one. 155 divided by 5, somehow I think I'm going to get 31, but we're going to see here. Um, 5 goes into 15 three times. Um, which leaves me five. Hey, look at that, 31. So uh, that means I'm going to have uh, this turn to 31. And 31 times negative one, well, that's going to be uh, negative 31. And one times five, well, that's five. So uh, my answer would normally stay like that, except that I'm going to turn it into a proper uh, mixed number, proper fraction. 5 goes into 31 six times with one left over. So that means that x has to be less than negative 6 and 1 fifth. All right. And uh, I also agree that I would go ahead and do this as a decimal just to go ahead and show you all of you that like working decimals, that it's just as easy. I could have left this at negative 6.25x is uh, greater than, and I could have turned this to negative 38.75 because 3 fourths is 0.75. Remember, uh, these fractions, every fraction is a division problem, right? So uh, that's 3 divided by 4. And if you want to check your calculator, you will get 0.75. Now I can go ahead and divide this number by negative 6.25, which will make me have to divide this number. Uh, ooh, we got a tactical error here, don't we? We had a negative here, multiplied, and I didn't realize this was a negative until now. That would turn this into a positive, six and one-fifth. I apologize for that. And I'm glad I did it over here so I could catch that mistake. Uh, it means I'm going to divide negative uh, 6.25 over here. 
A negative divided by a negative equals a positive, but I'm still dividing. Over here, I'm multiplied by a negative number. Over here, I'm dividing by one, and that's going to give me x over here is greater, oh, I'm sorry, less than. <clears throat> Turning my symbol around because I'm di dividing by a negative number. And if I have uh, 38.75 and I go ahead and divide by 6.25, well, I'm going to move that decimal over twice, which means I move this decimal over twice. And um, let's see what we got here. Well, that looks like it goes into it one time. Uh, actually, 6.25 goes into uh, 387. Let's see. Well, I'm going to go by 6. Um, and that's going to be 0. Carry the 1. And the only reason is because I know 5 times 6 is 30. Uh, and that's... 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Here the 1, 36, 37. Look at that. Uh, so this would be 3, 7, 3, uh, 0. And now we have 6 over here. Uh, if we subtract this, we get 5 and 4, 145. All right, so our answer here would be 6, uh, let's see, if I answer this as a decimal, uh, 1, see, 0.145 would be put over, uh, let's see, 1000, zero, zero, zero. it doesn't repeat, and then I'd have to divide both of these by 5, right? <clears throat> Actually... I think I could divide them more, but let's try by five first. Uh, one, see, five goes in there, uh, two, and then 45 would be, um, let's see, I'm going to have to do it the hard way, 145 divided by five would give me, uh, let's see, 10, two up here, give me 45. And that'd be nine, so that'd be 29. So let's see if I put uh, 29 over, and if I divide uh, this part, that's going to be 200. And let's see, can I divide these into anything else? Well, I'm thinking not. So as a fraction, six and 29. Why am I feeling I can divide them even more? I'm going to check my calculator here. Just make sure. Um, see, if I divide 3875 divided by 625, that equals 6.2. Okay. So that means. Uh, this will give me 0.2. Well, now that I know that, you might be thinking, how is 0.2 convert to this? Remember, uh, 0.2 put over, right? Uh, 10 is going to give you uh, one fifth, right? And that's what that one fifth is. So these are equal answers, except for this is positive. I keep wanted to uh, give you the right answer and leaving it the wrong one. Uh, but there you go. Uh, it should be a positive six and one fifth, or uh, and remember this is X is less than six and one fifth, or X is less than 6.2. They're both mean the same thing. All right, uh, sorry that last one took so long, but here's the last problem and usually the hardest one. I'll see you in class and have a good night.